Hey everybody, welcome to Cold School. Uh, I just wanted to go over a couple of things. Uh, I wanted to give you a visual image of uh, why I it'd be best to, I was going to say I think, but it actually is to, whether you're using a PC fan or an inline fan or anything, to use an air box to create space in between the fan and the uh, radiator or the uh, transfer unit that you're using if you're using copper tubing, you know, etc. So, uh, so just for instance, if this is your setup here and you're using a PC fan, you might have a different model, different design, different fan blade, smaller motor, but if it's flush like this and it's up against there, up against the radiator, which is right here, and that's your setup, I would never recommend putting the fan behind the radiator and pushing it through because uh, you're going to have more effectiveness pulling it through and then letting the fan disperse the air instead of the fan pushing the air in the radiator and hoping the radiator fins will project the uh, air outward, which is not going to work. So always put your fan blowing out. So the difference between and the advantage and the difference between having it flush with no space in between the fan and the radiator versus having a fan and a radiator separated by airspace. And this is a, you know, this is a transparent box. So it gives you a visual image of all the space available on the radiator to a fan that's actually smaller than the radiator. Now, just for instance, this fan is about the same size as the radiator. However, the difference is here. So I drew this up. So anytime you put the fan flush sideways like this up against the radiator like this, the, if, if your fan is this size and the radiator is the same size and you put the fan flush like, oops, like this, then the center of the fan being flush is not going to pull any air through the radiator. So you're not going to get any use out of all the fins that are cold in the radiator to come through. Same thing with the outside of the frame like this in the picture. You're not going to get any air traveling through the radiator. I mean, zero air is going to travel through there. Um, so the only place you're going to get any airflow going through the rate so the radiator gets cold that's where you get your energy that's your so the radiator gets its fuel from the ice water the fan gets its fuel from the cold temperature of the radiator and the fins so when you put the fan flush like that the only place air can even get through the radiator is the area where the fan blades are so if that's a hundred percent of your radiator space available to give you cold temperature then you're only getting what maybe just without being too particular 50% so you're getting 50% effectiveness in cooling which you can double your uh, effectiveness by putting space in between like this so if this is your radiator side view or top view and this is your fan top view and you put space in between there like this right here and you go Let's get this set up here real quick. Oops. Well, I guess it's, uh, what did I do wrong here? Let me see if I can get it to stand up. I must have done something wrong. So anyway, if you put the fan against it like this, so it doesn't want to stand up now. Um, so what I was saying, you're only getting maybe 50% of the radiator that's cold, you're only getting 50% of it or so, a little more, a little less, depending on the size of the motor and the fan blades and the frame, that you're only getting that much fuel use out of your uh, radiator. So if you separate them like this, then what happens is if you take the same fan and you put it on the radiator like that, but you put space in between there, you actually, as far as your radiator surface area, you get full advantage of the whole radiator versus 50% advantage here. You get zero airflow here, zero. 
zero airflow here. That's the only airflow you get. So you might as well run a fan. You know, basically, you're. I don't know about the temperature transfer to the air, but the effectiveness of your radiator, you're only getting 50% use there, and you're getting 100% use there. So when the uh, air travels across the entire space of the radiator, even if the fan is smaller than the radiator, not the fan box, but the fan itself, you can still funnel 100% of your radiator cold temperature air funneled through there. But you can't funnel between here and there. There's no funnel space. But if you were to spread it out, I can only reach so far here, but let's say uh, you were able to spread it out this far, you can funnel, say, six inches down to four inches or six inches by six inches down to three inches or two inches or one inch. You can funnel the whole air, the whole available cold temperature of those fins so the airflow, the airflow will go through the entire radiator and funnel through there. Now, you can get too small where uh, or a fan too big and too powerful that won't pull. you got to have some sort of a... a of a of a of a uh, semantics or cohesion between your relationship between the fan and the radiator, but as just as far as uh, engineering and physics go, you if you'll space them out, you'll have what I'm saying is you'll get a hundred percent airflow across a hundred percent of your radiator, and here you won't. It'll be thirty percent, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy percent, but you'll never have a hundred percent as long as the configuration is flush like this. So if you have this, you get to funnel this much airspace through this fan. This particular fan is strong enough to funnel all that air and airspace, cold air through here and, and effectively disperse it. So when you do it where it's flush like that, if you look at it, so whatever you can see so that's a good example there. Whatever you can see, that's the only area you can get airflow. So where this motor is, you're not getting any airflow through there. You're not getting any airflow through here or through here. So when you look at that, you might be at 45% or 40% or 38% where you can use the uh, amount of the radiator, which you can actually see the fins through there. That's all you can use. But if... But if you had a 6x6 six six or 5x6 six or 4x6 six radiator, if you're using a PC, which is smaller, you can use 100% of that. So that's the difference between using a, not using an airbox and going flush versus you, using an airbox for space in between and utilizing the whole temperature. So I just wanted to show you that you get 100% of uh, when it's uh, airbox mounted, you get 100% of your fuel. If you do this, you're only getting, you know, at, you know, average 50% of your fuel. So it'll make it colder, it'll blow faster, and it'll probably blow a little further, but it'll definitely blow colder because you're getting 100% of your fuel through the same uh, CFMs through the fan. So I just wanted to share that, and uh, that's really important because uh, I've, I've been testing, this is 2020, and I've been uh, running these and using these off-grid for since uh, 2009. So at this point today, I've been using, making, and designing and testing these for uh, 11 years. So uh, that definitely, no, uh, you, you want to have space in between your fan and your radiator. So... I hope this really helps uh, explain, and if you got any questions, I'll make another video on any specifics. Uh, if you do your math, uh, you can really fine-tune this stuff, but just as a basics 101, uh, that's the best way to go is use uh, airspace in between there, an airbox or a fairing is what you might call it. So I hope you all have a good day, and I hope it really helps, and uh, see you all later. Bye-bye.